So today I'm replacing a rocker arm in my 2013 Jeep Grand Cherokee uh, Limited. Um, it's got a 3.6 liter V6 engine in it and it's got the telltale tick of the Pentastar engine with a bad rocker arm. So uh, if you've got the radio going and the air conditioning going and even sitting here in the cab, it's kind of hard to hear that tick, but I'm gonna go around and actually let you hear it from the engine so that you can hear what that tick actually sounds like. So as you can see, in the engine, or sitting in the cabin, it was actually kind of hard to hear that tick. But as soon as I pop the hood, then it's gonna be a lot easier to hear that ticking sound um, that tells me that there's a bad rocker arm. So if you listen for it, you can hear that ticking noise. So I'm gonna have to tear this thing apart, get in there, replace that rocker arm. Um, what's going on is that there's a ball bearing in that rocker arm that the camshaft's supposed to roll over, but the ball bearing has gone bad. So now the camshaft is actually hitting the metal sides of the rocker arm instead of that ball bearing. Um, and if I don't fix it, uh, I'll be replacing a camshaft, which I really don't want to get in there to do. So I'm going to try to take care of that rock arm, get rid of that tick, and hopefully uh, not have to deal with this for uh, a few more years. First step that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take off the air intake tube as well as this cover here. I'm not going to go through that here. I've got another video, which I'll link to right there, uh, that you can go back to where I had to do that to uh, clean the throttle body. Uh, so let's go ahead and get through that. All right, as you can see, I got the four bolts out on the throttle body, about ready to take it off. Gonna remove this tube in the back and then remove it out of the way so I can remove the manifold. Now we got a connector and a tube that we've gotta remove. Uh, this connector right back here, you're gonna have to get off. A little trick is you use your screwdriver and just gently push on that red tab until it pops out. Then you'll be able to get that connector off. And we're also gonna have to remove this tube here. Another trick is you use your screwdriver, just get in there and wedge it until you can actually just pop it right off. So you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. There's one more right inside of here, seven, that I've removed. Make sure that you've gotten that nut off and you got the bracket out of the way. You're gonna wanna, and then you'll be able to lift it and shift it over. And there's one more cable, one more tube in the back here. Uh, I don't think I've got enough light for you to really see it good, but there's a tube right here that you remove, and then you got the whole manifold off. Okay, I got all my connectors unconnected and out of the way. Got the ones off the camshaft. There's one down here as well that you're gonna wanna disconnect so that you can move this out of the way. And as you can see, I numbered each of my coils. That's important so that you make sure you put the coils back in the same position that they were in before. And there's a connector here in the back that I'm going to have to remove. Um, and then I'm going to start to unscrew uh, the head uh, after I take the coils off. Um, and then we'll be ready to remove this. And in addition to that back nut that's back there, if I can get the camera back there, there's another nut right here and a tube right here, which are gonna have to be removed. This nut back here is so hard to get to. There's so many tubes and a bracket that you're gonna have to push out of the way. Um, you got the transmission fill tube here, which could be in the way. So uh, you're gonna have to get back there, get at that one, release that one, remove that tube. And then the next thing we're gonna do is gonna remove this piece here and remove this sensor, and we're pretty close to being able to get at it, get at the rocker arm. So I got the coils off and I'm starting to take the screws off of the head, but there's this tube here, and if, uh, if I can get some light on it, I'll show it to you. Um, there is one bolt in the back there, there it is. Uh, that is nearly impossible to get to with that tube in the way. So you're gonna have to go through and uh, undo some more of these uh, Christmas tree type of connectors off of this tube. 
If anybody's got a trick for getting those things off easily and without breaking them, you know, please share it in the comments below uh, because there are a ton of these things. Chrysler absolutely loves those things on this engine. Uh, but yeah, you're going to have to loosen up that tube in order to get back there at that back uh, nut in order to take the head off. So, as you can see, I've removed the sensor and I've removed the tube and I was able to get the screws off after contorting my body into unnatural positions uh, and I'm able to get this piece off and get it out. And I'll show you how I got that tube off um, because it wasn't easy. So here's the tube that was attached and it was attached um, like this. Uh, and what I was able to do is get my screwdriver and get it down in here and just wedge it off and be able to pop it off like that. And then once I got the tube, I just had to bend and get a tiny little T20 uh, uh, socket in there and be able to get it off and get those screws out and got the piece off. Now it's time to take the head off. All right, I got the head off, and now I gotta find out which of the rockers is bad. So I just kinda go through and give them a good shake, you know, and they're all pretty solid. That one's a little loose um, going through, but you know what? Um, I went back here in this back one. You can hear it. And that's the ticking noise. Um, Something else I noticed is there's paint here on the camshaft, uh, which is a lot of times what you can do if you're taking both the camshafts off um, and you're gonna replace all the rocker arms. Um, I'll link to another video over here by someone else who uh, replaced all of them. Great video. So just another indication that somebody else has been in here before me um, and done work. So. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna take these all off. I'm just gonna take these off, loosen these up, get it to move up enough that I can get this one broken one out of here. I can replace it, put it back down, and then put it back together. All right, so as you can see, I took this one completely off. I've loosened this one up, loosened this one. Just really broke this one free. What I don't want is I don't want the camshaft to move a lot. I don't want it to move really much at all. I just want it to lift up enough that I can get the rocker down here out. And I can feel it and, yep, it's coming right out, which is perfect. What the hell? All right, so I got the rocker out, and you can see, look at that, good and broken. So I'm going to put the new one in, and then we'll button this back up. And here's the new one. As you can see, there's no movement in that at all when I press on it, not like the last one. So I'm going to slip this one back in, and we should be all set. And there we go, we got it all put back together, and as you can hear, the ticking is gone. So if you have the Telltale Pentastar tick, uh, check to see which side it's on, find that broken rocker arm, replace it. It's always a good idea to replace all of them, but in this case, I was only able to replace one and then be able to limp through for hopefully another couple of years.